today. My name is George Baumgartner. I'm the curator of natural history at the Nevada State Museum in Carson City. I'm here today to uh, give you a brief presentation that we call Curator's Corner. And today I will be talking about some of the snakes that occur in northwestern Nevada. I will first show you examples of some of the animals that you might find around here. And then I will talk a little bit more about rattlesnakes because people are very interested in that and uh, it would be good for people to know how to tell them from other snakes. Uh, we have about 15 species of snakes in northwestern Nevada. Uh, depends upon who you talk to, but 15 is, is a good number. And I'll show you some here. Now, all of these are specimens. Well, some of these are models. They're made out of plastic and they've been painted to look lifelike. And some of these are biological specimens that we have for our scientific collection. Uh, they can be studied, studied by scientists and they're also used for educational programs such as this one. So probably the snake that most people will see in this area is this one right here. It's a fairly big snake. It's called in this area a gopher snake. Uh, if you get further east it's called a bull snake and in some places it's also called a pine snake. Uh, this is a non-venomous animal, rather large snake. These can get up to, oh, four feet long, something like that, and uh, maybe about an inch and a half or so in diameter. They're extremely variable. Here's another one, exactly the same species, but you can see it's much darker, but both of them have these blotched patterns on the back. Again, this is called a gopher snake. Another snake that you see fairly often, uh, I've seen this one mostly as, as a roadkill. In fact, that's what this one is. This is called a striped whip snake. And you can see here that it has stripes along its side. And it looks a little bit like a leather whip. And I'll show you another example of this, a different species. This particular snake if you turn it over, it's kind of a cream color up front, but as you go toward the back, toward the tail, it becomes uh, pinkish in color. And in life, this, this was probably almost a salmon pink in color. It is faded. This is the other whip snake I was talking about. This is called a coach whip or a red racer. You can see a little bit of a hint of red here on the head, and then as you go toward the back, it gets lighter in color. But you can also see that the tail looks like a braided whip. So this is arguably the second most commonly seen snake by most people in Nevada. Uh, most of the time they'll see it on the road. This is a rattlesnake, very big animal. Actually, this is one of the biggest ones I've seen in, uh, in the state. Uh, I found this dead on the road and stretched out. It was, I believe it was about three and a half feet, maybe four feet long. A lot of rattles and a triangular head. And I'll talk about this more in a minute. Here's a pretty snake that I've never had the privilege of seeing live in Nevada. This is a California king snake. Very pretty snake. Uh, it's black and then a lighter color, uh, yellow, white, cream color. In life, this lighter area probably was a little bit darker shade of yellow than what you can see on it now. And lastly, uh, another animal that I've uh, only once seen uh, alive, this is a boa. And it is a burrowing animal. It eats, uh, oh, say, insects, termites, that type of thing. Uh, very small head. And unlike many of the snakes, it also has kind of a blunt tail. Kind of hard to tell the difference between the head and the tail on these things. Uh, these uh, you'll find in, uh, in the Sierra, and I've also seen them in the Tahoe Basin. So 
one of the, th the things that snakes do as they grow, they have to shed their skin. And this is the skin of a gopher snake. You can tell that, can't really tell it probably on the picture, but you can see a little bit of the, 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 the blotchy pattern that's actually on the back of this snake. And that is just like this in this model right here. You can see the blotches there and the blotches right there. Fairly big snake and what they'll do is once they grow big enough that they're too big for their skin, it will actually shed off and it might look like, like this one does. It just looks like a sock that's been peeled off your foot. So to talk about the rattlesnakes and something that a lot of people confuse for a rattlesnake. This is a rattlesnake and this is the gopher snake. You can see here that they both have these rather blotchy looking patterns on their backs. Both of these snakes, while the, the necks are about the same diameter, the uh, distance across the jaws are quite wider as opposed to that of the gopher snake, which is more uh, torpedo shaped. Another difference, this one has a rattle. This one doesn't. Another thing that, that you can tell the difference between them is there's a, there's a big difference in their skulls. This is the skull of a rattlesnake right here. And you can see the fangs in there. And then this is the skull of a fairly big non-venomous snake. And you can see it does not have any fangs. And see how this one is more shaped like an arrowhead, and this one is more like a torpedo. Another thing that you can use to tell the difference between these is the rattlesnake has what's called a l'oreal pit, and it is, a, it is a hole basically between the eye and the nose it's a hole would be right about here if I was a rattlesnake. And it's right there. This is the nose, that's the eye, that's the l'oreal pit. And that is actually an infrared sensor that the snake will use to perceive the body heat of say like a mouse um, or um, a rat, something like that. And so that's an extra way that the snake has beyond sight to perceive that something that it wants to eat is out there. This animal right here does not have that. Here's the eye, there's the nose, there is no l'oreal pit in between the two. Now granted that's something that most people don't want to get close enough to a snake to find that, but it is something that once you know what you're looking at, uh, you can see fairly readily. Another way to tell these apart, and again, this is one of those things that you might not want to get close enough to see, is the eye on the gopher snake, its pupil is round, whereas the eye on, or the pupil on the rattlesnake is elliptical or vertical. Uh, and you can see that in this close-up right here. Another thing on the rattlesnake, there is the fang. Now the rattlesnake fangs, they're hollow. It's like a needle. It normally sits up against the jaw, but when it opens its mouth to bite, these will move down so that it can inject venom into its prey. So I guess the best thing to say was if you see a snake, and you're worried about it or if it's in an area where more people or pets might come into it, the best thing to do is just to leave it alone or if you're younger, go find your parents, let them know about it and they can decide what to do with the animal. Thank you for your time. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of Curator's Corner. Thank you.